basically we feel like the most important thing for us to do is to help create better lines of communication between those groups, the farmers and the processors and the Department of Ag, because it feels like for the most part, there's kind of a pretty big disconnect there. That's Ben Davies, one of the leaders of the Farmer Processor Education and Outreach Subcommittee of the Pennsylvania Hemp Steering Committee. This is the Lancaster Farming Industrial Hemp Podcast. My name is Eric Harlock, and my guests today are Ben Davies and Chet Lapp, both of whom have been on the show before talking about their individual hemp operations. But this time, they're here in their official capacity as members of the Pennsylvania Hemp Steering Committee leadership team. And so we'll talk about their work on the steering committee and how they plan to connect with farmers and processors. So before we get into today's show, I just wanted to address the fact that there was no show last week. I don't know if you missed me or not, but I missed all of you. So I'm back this week. I took the week off. I was convalescing after some minor surgery. All good now. So thank you for your patience and understanding. All right, let's get into some nuggets of hemp news. So first, Hemp Industry Daily is reporting that a town in North Texas, Wichita Falls, has authorized $2.8 million worth of incentives to lure Panda Biotech to town to build a hemp decortication facility. Panda Biotech is based in Dallas, and they are developing hemp facilities for premium textile-grade fiber and cellulose, and they've got machinery that will process approximately 10 tons of industrial hemp per hour. All right, good luck, Wichita Falls. Hemp Industry Daily is also reporting that there are two grant opportunities available for hemp farmers but the application deadlines are quickly approaching. The first grant is called the Socially Disadvantaged Groups Grant with a maximum award amount of $175,000 and is eligible only to co-ops, groups of co-ops, or cooperative development centers which must be governed by a majority of individuals who are members of socially disadvantaged groups and are providing technical assistance to socially disadvantaged groups in rural areas. The deadline to apply is August 10th. The second USDA grant is called the Rural Cooperative Development Grant and has a maximum award of $200,000 and has a 25% fund matching requirement. It's only available to nonprofit corporations or institutes of higher education. The deadline to apply for this one is August 3rd. Okay, some news from Michigan where hemp growers have been operating under the 2014 Farm Bill pilot program. The new regulation would align the state's program with the USDA's interim final rule. The new regulations were passed by the state legislature at the end of June and now are awaiting the governor's signature. Some of the changes to the program include an increase in annual licensing fees from $100 to $1,250 and a requirement to test for total THC within 15 days of harvest. Okay, some news from closer to home here in Pennsylvania. Near Columbia, Lancaster County, a grain dryer that was being used to dry hemp exploded, causing a fire that destroyed the barn and the house. The grain dryer belonged to Floyd Landis of Floyds of Leadville, who was renting the barn space to dry the hemp. I reached out to Floyds of Leadville for comment, but I've not heard back yet. I did speak with one of the owners of the farm, Patty McConley, who lost her house, barn, and a lot of the inventory for her alpaca fiber business. She is thankful, though, because she says it could have been much worse, and thanks to the grace of God, none of her family was injured. And among the many animals at the farm, including alpacas and a camel, only two cats perished in the blaze. Okay, this next nugget isn't necessarily news, but it's a nugget nonetheless. This also comes from Hemp Industry Daily, which if you don't check out that website, you should. There's always great information about the industry there. This is a sort of a top 10 list put together by Kristen Nichols, who has been on this show before. Uh, These are the top 10 reasons why hemp entrepreneurs can still be optimistic about the industry. Number one, real agronomy has finally come to cannabis through university extension services afforded to hemp as a legal commodity crop to improve crop science and production. Number two, crop protection options. Pesticides and biopesticides registered for hemp through the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency for safe application and consumption. Number three, 
USDA involvement with resources to research and develop the hemp industry. Number four, crop insurance is now available, both privately and government backed to help mitigate risk. Number five, private sector is opening its wallets, investing into the hemp supply chain. Number six, e-commerce is making hemp derived products like CBD more accessible to consumers. Number seven, CBD is not over. Consumers spent $4.2 trillion globally on wellness products in 2018, according to the Global Wellness Institute, and CBD is a huge part of that, particularly in personal care. Number eight, unmatched global opportunities. There are challenges globally, but it's easier to import and export for hemp businesses. Number nine, the herd mentality. Companies are investing in new uses for hemp waste from stalks in the woody central core of the hemp plant including for building materials to rebuild the economy. And number 10, fiber is arriving. Mainstream businesses are putting hemp fiber and textiles into consumer products. Nichols goes on to say that we still have growing pains and the hemp industry has serious challenges, just like the cannabis space does, but the industry is going to grow through 2021. I will have links to all of these stories on the show page for this episode on LancasterFarming.com. Okay, so let's get into our interview with Chet Lapp and Ben Davies. If you've listened to the show for a while, you've heard these guys talk before. Chet is the CEO of Keystone AgriScience. He's a member of Pennsylvania's plain community, often referred to as the Amish. He works with a group of farmers in Lancaster County to grow CBD hemp. And Ben, he was just on the show a few weeks ago with his wife, Cara. They farm hemp up in Berks County under the name of Wild Fox Provisions. All right, here we go. Chet Lapp, Ben Davies, welcome back to the Lancaster Farming Industrial Hemp Podcast. How are you guys doing? Hey, thanks, Derek. Doing good. Thanks. Doing great. Good. So you guys you guys have been on the show before talking about different things, but now you're here for sort of a different reason. Um, you were selected to be part of the Pennsylvania Hemp Steering Committee leadership team, and together you are heading up the Farmer and Processor Education and Outreach Subcommittee. So let's talk about it. Ben, by default, do you just want to go first? Sure. Um, the Department of Ag decided that they wanted to start a steering committee, and um, they kind of assembled a group of um, well-rounded, uh, well, maybe it could be better rounded than it is uh, currently, but a, a membership for a steering committee um, that would that would advise the Department of Ag or be a little bit of a liaison between the rest of the industry and the Department of Ag. Um, and then from within that, there was some nominations and essentially, I mean, just nominated different leadership teams um, to uh, to basically lead certain pieces of the of the industry and the discussion, the networking, the communication. Um, for the steering committee um, in specific ways. And so Chet and I were nominated to be the leaders of the Farmer and Processor Education and Outreach Committee. And, um, and that's kind of like where, where the, the definition ends and it's up to us kind of to decide, you know, what, what our role is and what what good we can do to create a better um, hemp industry in Pennsylvania and um, and how we can kind of move things forward. So that's one of the reasons why we wanted to have this call um, uh, or this, you know, this discussion with you, Eric, is because we wanted to, I think our, the thing that Chet and I came up with is that basically we feel like the most important thing for us to do is to help create better lines of communication between those groups, the farmers and the processors, mm-hmm. um, and the Department of Ag, because it feels like for the most part, it's there's kind of a pretty big disconnect there, whereas like boots in the field and legislative activity aren't always lining up. And the, the practicality or the reality of those two things are not always lining up. And we want to make sure that the Department of Ag is well informed in its decision making. And, and then obviously processors and farmers are, are well educated about what they can or can't do and how to go about navigating it. Chet, would you like to uh, 
add anything there? Well, I, I regret that I told Ben to go first because he's just <laughs> going to cover the topic that well, that there's nothing left, <laughs> left to be said. No, that was well said. Um, there's definitely, we, you know, I'm excited to be able to, to lend a hand. I know, you know, the, some of the guys personally, guys and gals at, at PDA that are heading up to him industrial hemp department and you know they're they're trying and uh, they have a hard time hearing hearing the farmer's voice at times so we're really hoping we can bridge that gap uh, especially the plain community I, we're hoping to set up a a uh, avenue so they can you know at least share their thoughts and opinions and we'll try to break those down and uh, and like Ben said, you know, go back to PDA with that, and hopefully establish a um, a good a, a good relationship and a good line of communication. Okay. So um, that sounds like you have some some goals in place. Do you have a, a plan now to implement? I mean, we have some ideas. I think I think that Chet and I are both. We also we both don't necessarily feel like we speak for the farmers and the processors. Um, like we, we're not all knowing in that we know what everybody needs or thinks. Um, we we have a pretty good ear to the ear to the track, so to say. I guess we know what's going on generally speaking. But we decided that it would be best right now for us to before we can really do the do the work. Of, of what the potential is here, we want to make sure that we develop good lines of communication, which we don't feel like are in place right now. And so we're brainstorming about how to do that. But what we just did today was um, set, set up basically an email address and a phone number that, um, that farmers and or processors can call. And then we want to try to, you know, gather a a list of contacts for a, you know, maybe a quarterly newsletter that we would email out um, and also be able to have some, at least maybe quarterly um, conference call for, for the plain community. Um, and so we have uh, that email address is, let me just make sure I say it right here. Um, the email address Oops, technical difficulties. Farmer processor outreach at gmail.com. So that's the email address. Farmer processor outreach at gmail.com. And then Chet has a, a Google phone number that he just established today that, um, um, that can be ca called. And uh, you want to say what that is, Chet? Sure. Um, so just back to the Gmail address, Eric, it is, it's not, it's farmer, not, not plural, processor, not plural. It's farmer, processor, outreach. Okay. And the phone number is uh, area code 717-455-7904, 455-7904. Okay. And so farmers and or processors can call that number and leave a message and address their concerns is is somebody going to be there to pick up or is it always a an answering machine it's going to get a voicemail okay yep oh i'm old school so. i call it answering machine <laughs> Answer <laughs> yeah both both are you know we would we would prefer that way we can so we'll be ben and i will be able to sort them out together then okay great and try, you know if there's if there'd be multiple requests you know we would try to try to work with it that way. And you would encourage farmers and processors maybe just to call or email anyway, just to connect, whether you have a concern or not, but just to, to connect with you guys. We're going to send out, I think, an email blast here just to ask for um, contact submissions, essentially, so that if, if farmers or processors do want to be involved and do want to to be able to relay things to us mm -hmm. um, since we have a little bit more direct um, 
line to the Department of Ag that we want to make sure that we can aggregate those questions, concerns, mm -hmm. and comments and be able to re relay those efficiently to the Department of Ag um, and, and our contacts there. Um, but it but also is just that we're kind of sending out the request email that we're, we're going to send out an email blast requesting but also you know if you if you heard that email address and you want to be involved you want to be in contact with any kind of like updates or news that might be happening then if you just send an email to that email address or call that phone number and leave a voicemail with your contact information then we'll be able to to log that information and know that you're interested in, in those updates um, over time. Okay, great. And I'll, I'll put those, um, that with the phone number and the email on the show page for this episode. And maybe we'll, you know, we'll stick it in the paper for this Saturday too. So uh, people can see it in Lancaster Farming. That would, that would be great, Eric. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what are some of the other obstacles or challenges that you hope to sort of address with this committee? I mean, communication obviously is the first top priority because we're not going to be able to get anything else done unless we have, unless we've nurtured a little bit better lines of communication. So that's what we're, our main goal here with this conversation is. But, um, but otherwise, yeah, I mean, I think that there's definitely some concerns on the legislative level. Um, obviously, we want to advocate for farmers and processors in Pennsylvania, the the you know i'll be honest we all it's the elephant in the room the the medical marijuana program gets preferential treatment over farm hemp farms in pa so why you know why is there preferential treatment happening there happening there and what you know what can we do to continue to advocate for hemp farmers equally as well um i think that um there's a lot of loose ends when it comes to the processor side of things um, and the handling of extract and all of those different things that, um, that are involved in that process of taking that hemp harvest and turning it into various stages, taking it in through various stages of the supply chain to you know, a retail product. Um, so there's quite a few things there um, even just including, you know, legislation for CBD to be able to be used in food um, and, you know, some of the ingredient, uh, like some, some of even just on the hemp seed side. And that's m largely um, legal at this point. The hemp, I don't know if hemp was approved to be in, uh, the hemp seed was able to be approved in as animal feed yet. There's some issues there. I haven't heard um, that go through yet. And, and, uh, you know, obviously those are things that need to be moved forward. Um, and then there's so many, so many things regarding um, hemp fiber, regarding like building materials and approvals for, you know, um, certain certifications for building materials to be used um, and um, diff trying to establish better regional processors for hemp fiber as well, which is just kind of not really happening right now in Pennsylvania. Um, so those are, those are all things that we're concerned about that we want to make sure. Um, and then, you know, things that affect every part of the hemp industry, like uh, field testing for THC and the sampling procedures and the timeline for harvest and approvals from the department of ag. Mm -hmm. um, those are things that we, there, there's new developments this year and we want to make sure that no matter what the farmer doesn't, you know, get the short end of the stick there you go. Um, is our, that's our primary objective. I think is, is the farmers and the processors need to not get the short end of the stick when it comes to, to all of these things. We sh there's no reason that we should be ever destroying crop. Right. Um, um, what about the instances where the farmer gets the short end of the stick from the processor? You know, is that, that a concern too? Cause I've heard some stories. I'm going to say another big elephant in the room is, is right next to what Ben said is, is trying to protect the farmer here. And it is, it is a really, really rough game right now, uh, between, uh, you know, most 
most buyers are not the buyers. They're just brokers. It's just really tough. I mean, one of the things that I would like to do more than anything is, is just to, is to just start breaking down and uh, not in a malicious way, but just trying to establish some common ground, some trust. Um, There's just no oversight. And of course we're, you know, we're mingling a little bit with some of the other subcommittees here, Eric, Um, you know, we're former processor, but it all ties together. So I know for Ben and I personally, we're very much advocates for, to try to clean, help clean up that act. I mean, obviously we're not, we're not the department and we're not cops, but by all means, let's, let's all work toward a common goal there. So if we communicate well back to number one is we, we agree strongly that communication is, is the key here. And if we stand together as a group, and just some, you know, this has to work up and down the chain. So mm-hmm. we need to, we need to make it work for the farmers, the processors and uh, touching briefly on the farmer processor thing. Um, we're struggling. We're struggling for good processing. I'll let Ben say his piece. Uh, they're struck. I'll just be, I'll be, I'll be nice about it. The processors are struggling too. It's, it's a tough, tough game. Uh, to get started in. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they're starting from scratch. They don't have, but, you know, the, one thing I can, uh, probably the only thing I'll say is just do the, do what you said you're going to do. And, uh, and I think, I think we can crawl out of this together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Getting back to what you said about, you know, establishing trust in, in there. I think you guys are perfect for this committee because of, you know, the work you're already doing. So you can, you can lead by example. So I'm, I'm grateful that you guys are on this subcommittee. Well, thanks, Eric. Yeah. We're going to keep trying. Yeah. So we've talked about the outreach part of it. What, what does the education part of this mean to you guys? I mean, for me, it's all integral. It's, it's all integral there. I mean, we, again, establishing those lines of communication so that we can help educate farmers about program parameters. Like there's, um, you know, one of the things we discussed on the most recent, at the most recent um, steering committee meeting here last week was that there's, um, see if I can find the numbers here, but there's, there's basically close to 550 permit holders in Pennsylvania this year. And, um, over 300 of them are new wow. permit holders. Wow. So this, like, uh, just a little over 200 that were renewals, but then over, over 300 of them are new permit holders. So people who have never grown hemp in Pennsylvania at least before. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's huge. I mean, that's a, that's a lot of – that's a big leap in, in – numbers uh of of new farmers growing hemp in pennsylvania so th- there's definitely a, a learning curve and yeah would you would, would you guys get into educating like growing practices or would you sort of just facilitate getting people into education programs run by other people at the at this point i the the latter okay um i am not in a position at all where that's not even my that's not my wheelhouse right. i I mean, I get, I, I, I shouldn't say, you know, some, I would have to reorganize my life a little bit. Uh, so. <laughs> I can relate to that. Yeah. I don't think, I don't know that this is necessarily, we don't see ourselves. I mean, obviously we have multi other businesses. Both of us have multiple businesses that we're running. Mm-hmm. So like, and we don't, we're not getting paid to do this. We don't have any funding behind any of this. So this is purely volunteer role that we're in. Um, and you know, it, this, us doing this well helps our businesses, but obviously it will help other businesses in Pennsylvania and other farmers. And so we're just, um, I don't think that we have the bandwidth at this point to actually do educational programming or anything like that. Um, but, but if we can establish a good network, um, and, and maybe a newsletter or something like that, we can always, you know, add educational opportunities in there that, that people might be able to 
and it's and it's not also not meant to necessarily be like Paul Chet and Ben for consultations on a weekly <laughs> basis either. You know, <laughs> I think uh, we may have some some knowledge there, but that's not that's not the point of it either. It's it's really just we're trying to help bridge the gap. You know. Yeah. Amen to all that. I, I don't. I'm not even going to add. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about about the uh, the subcommittee? What am I forgetting to ask? I don't know. I think um, I would encourage you to have the other subcommittee lead leadership on. That's a great um, idea. Yep. And and uh, possibly it would be great if you could have like Strathmire on Fred Strathmire. Um, uh, like you know he's doing, and then um, uh, Kelly Kondratik from Team PA. Uh, the hemp, hemp summit i'm sure you'll probably have her at some point but i would i would say you could do it it would be i think it would be really valuable to just hear hear the different perspectives from the different committee leads um and how they um you know plan to try and create this 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 whole you know steering committee right. momentum uh because i think there's a really there is an all-star cast. Uh, it's a lot of really good people in the industry who are going to be able to, to bring a lot of good expertise to the table, I think. Yeah, it's a, an impressive list of people. I've actually spoken to most of them before. It was, yeah. it was encouraging to see the list and be like, oh, I know most of these folks. So Yeah, the, the, Eric, the goal again was just to start with, with an email address and a phone number and uh, – at least try, you know, we're cringing a little bit. Um, we don't know what that flow is, uh, repeating what Ben said, you know, we're not getting paid for this. We're both passionate, but it, it's gonna, we're gonna have to, to be wise with our time and how, how things play out. So I will, I will say this for anybody listening, you know, don't expect an answer in 24 hours, you know, it could Good, good days okay. uh, before we get back to people. Yeah. So just, I I'd, I'd just like to establish good expectations here. Okay. Cool. Um, so change gears a little bit. How are things going for you guys, you know, growing wise? How's the season shaping up for you? And actually, I'm really asking Chet because, Ben, I talked to you on the show just a few weeks ago. And yeah, that's fine. So yeah, Chet, last time we spoke, it was the end of the end of the season for you, I guess, last December. And last year you had quite a few growers and I get the sense that this year you've got fewer. Yes. And, <laughs> and, uh, it's, it's based around, um, um, fonding. Uh, last year we, we fonded a lot of our own crop, uh, say a Bell Evans setup mm -hmm. where, uh, you own the, they own the chickens the whole way through and the and the in this case the grower grows the chickens and uh and then they take them back and there's a you know a agreed upon price so and so so it was mostly based around i mean we could have a hundred farmers if we'd fund it uh i think is fair to say so this year we we flipped the script. I mean, I basically said we can't go on. We can't go into year two like this. And so we ended up with a handful of farmers that said, you know, we're we're willing to to take the risks alongside of you. Mm. And um, I finally consented to that, and and we moved forward. And then we got some just to shout out to Joe Ullman and a fellow by the name of John Daff, and he he is a short start transplant so we basically jumped on joe's back uh, atlas seed and um and uh we were growing most mostly all of his uh genetics the autoflowers and, uh, the autoflowers yeah. yep and um some photo he has a few photo and 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 uh and a little bit of photo from another source but yeah so we we, we kind of built a team so to speak uh I help facilitate. I'm doing a little grow in my meadow. Eric, I guess you were at my meadow. I was there. Morning. Yeah. Yeah. That's a nice spot. I'm doing a lot less because I'm doing auto. Mm -hmm. And um, 
which is great. I can do the minimum grow and it's, and it's not that big, which is per PDA standards. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that, that's what we're doing. So the farmer this year owns the, the, the plant and, uh, we're facilitating trying to build, um, the goal here is to build a, a co-op, just start small and just kind of, it's just kind of build it if, if, if you want to say it that way. And we're working really hard at, at marketing and, and I feel just put this in my intro. Uh, I'll just throw it in now. We, we are gearing toward, and it, this is kind of by default, uh, the amount of biomass we have, uh, we are working really hard at, at becoming a distributor, a supplier of the distributors. And um, like Ben's doing a lot of retail. We are also doing some retail. Uh, our website's still not quite up and running. And, uh, but we are, we're looking really strongly at, at uh, doing wholesale uh, tinctures, uh, salves, um, and that kind of thing. So that is, that is where we're putting the most, most of our effort. And I'm, I'm covering, I'm saying that for Keystone AgriScience. Mm -hmm. Um, do you find that hemp is gaining, um, sort of more acceptance in the plain communities in Lancaster County? The sentiment is at an all time low. Oh, Farmers haven't been paid well. Some have been paid a little. Investments have not come back. Uh, I think until the money flows, that it will be a little bit of a struggle. Mm. Um, overall, uh, a, a, apart from that, a lot of people were helped. There's, there would be a lot of, there's, I, I don't know. There's negative and positive for sure. Um, okay. I'm not sure how to how to gauge that right. I would say from an investment standpoint the sentiment is low gentlemen thank you very much for your time today is there any any last words ben do you want to say anything before we close it up no i mean i think we're good i th i appreciate the opportunity and you know we just we got it. it's another season another new new program kind of it feels like so just you know gonna keep trudging forward here and see what see what plays out right. I'm all, all in it together and you know, we're, I think we're, if you're involved right now, it's still the beginning of this industry. So you just yep. got to kind of play your cards right and persevere and be patient. Yeah. You said something key there. We're, we're all in this together. So we're, we're in the first inning, but let's do this together. Yep. All right. Well, Ben Davies from Wild Fox Provisions and Chet Lapp from Keystone AgriScience. Thank you both very much for your time today. It's great talking to you guys again. You're yep. welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Harry. Okay, so I'll list that email address and phone number on the show page for this episode, and we'll have it listed in the, the newspaper this Saturday. I encourage you to reach out to these guys, let them know your concerns, be heard, all that stuff. Okay, so before we go, I have one more thing to share with you. Um, you might not be aware of it, but a couple of months ago, I started making this show available over the telephone. You can call 857-385-7946 and listen to the show. This might seem odd to listen to a podcast without the internet, but for a certain segment of Lancaster Farming's readers, this is the only way to hear the show. And I owe a debt of gratitude to my next guest for getting the ball rolling. Yeah, I'm David Stolte. I'm in the Honeybrook area, and uh, I have a small welding shop here. We do uh, custom welding and repairs, and we have also worked on hemp equipment. We've built oh, some new good. new machinery. Oh, good. Okay, and so you were trying to listen to the podcast before, but you, you don't have a like a cell phone or a computer to, to use, and so you were hoping that we could somehow make it so you could call up from a regular phone and listen to the podcast. Is that right? That's right. Okay, well, how did you first hear about the podcast, and why were you interested in it? First of all, I saw the ad in the Lancaster Farming is how I found out about the podcast and uh, had some interest in the hemp, hemp fields um, the last I've seen the last couple of years. And I actually grew about 30 plants 
last year myself, and then I got into some of the manufacturing part of the, of the machinery last okay. fall. And so you're you're a member of the plain communities of Lancaster County. That's right. And so that sort of limits your your ability to to get onto a computer and and listen to a podcast the way maybe uh, one uh, an English person might. That's right. And uh, yeah. I knew there's some some uh, I've often listened to recordings over the phone on on other subjects, and um, I just thought there had to be a way because I was I have interest in the in the hemp industry, and um, I wanted to listen to podcasts, but I didn't have any means here in the office except by phone. Right. And then, so, who did you talk to? I talked to Steve Roth, and um, he he said he'd call you, Eric, and he called, and then about a week later, I called Steve back, and he said, yep, it's on. So that's when I started listing for myself. That's right. Yeah, Steve reached out to me, and I wasn't sure how to do it at first, but then eventually I found an app company... Uh, called Bullhorn that let me put our show there so you could you could call in and listen. It's been about a month or so that I've been listening to it. And I've been okay. going back to some of the previous episodes to the ones that I had missed before. Okay. Um, so what, what aspects of the show do you like? Um, what else would you like to hear about? I really enjoy the, the, the local ones, the one you had last week of the local people and also... Um, it really sparked my interest that there's actually other machine shops that do custom work for the hemp mm-hmm. industry. There's this one, uh, I think it was in Lycoming County, that the brother said he had a local shop is is uh, working on a hemp harvesting machine. Yeah, that was Josh Lidecker up at Susquehanna Hemp. And that really, really piqued my interest because that's, I think it's awesome how this crop is allowing local shops, even not just the farmers, to be involved and... Um, and bring out um, machines that large factories, production factories, won't be able to do in in a short period. Right. Yeah. With a small shop, you can you can sort of prototype something and, and get it out to some farmers in a re- relatively you know quick fashion. Yeah, and it happened to us last fall for a couple of machines. There was a hemp trucking machine, and there's also hemp trimmers which we build here in our shop. Both of them, and we build them for other other farmers. We really really enjoyed that and. Uh, it was pretty hectic a couple of weeks, but uh, but it worked. So what's the name of your shop? Supply Hollow Machine. Say it one more time. Supply Hollow Machine. It's spelled S as in Sam, U, T as in Peter, L as in Lion, then E, E, Hollow okay. Machine. Supply Hollow Machines. Okay, great. Um, is there a phone number that people could call if they wanted to um, to hear about it? What's that phone number? Phone number is 610-469-4169. Okay, great. And... Uh, just curious if there are topics that you would like to hear about in the future on the show. Well, the topic that interests me is um, how the farmers are getting paid and what's happening now, and also in what what kind of needs do farmers see. I know there's a lot of hand labor, for, especially for the for the premium hemp flour. There's a lot of hand labor, and um, those hemp timbers that we built uh, really help to reduce that labor. Uh, I like to. What I like to hear about is the needs that farmers have in machinery. Uh, that's a bit of okay. a niche that we have is custom special equipment. Do you get a sense that the plain communities are more accepting of hemp now? Yes, I do. It varies some. Depends who you talk to. Just like anywhere else, people have different opinions. Yeah. There's not as much talk about it anymore. There's as it was last fall. Yeah. Since the coronavirus came about, there's not nearly as much gossip anymore. But uh, the people that are committed to it are, are keep right on going. And I feel there's a niche here in our community to grow hemp. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel we have the labor and uh, we're close to the soil. There's a lot of very good produce farmers in, in this area. And I feel they have a, a niche that may need to be filled. Yeah. Um, how about hemp as a medicine? Do you get a sense that members of your community use, let's say, CBD for a medicine? Oh, yes. It gets used. It gets yeah. used a lot. Yes. Yeah. Have you heard any, any stories, like in particular, of someone whose life has been changed by it? Well, I know. And even uh, in family here, my dad has some trouble with an ankle that he's used some hemp salve, and it has really helped. Um, yes, I know of different, uh, just hearsay of different people that has that he has helped to take yeah. the pain and the swelling away. Right. Well, that's good. 
All right. Well, hey, I appreciate you listening to our show and for also getting in touch with me. It's it's great to connect with with members of our larger community. You're welcome, man. I appreciate uh, you taking the time to do this for us. All right. Thank you, David. You're welcome. That's David Stoltzfus. He's the guy who, who got me to put this show on the telephone. So thanks again. All right. Well, that pretty much does it for today's show. Thank you for listening. Hope you all are doing well, staying safe, being smart, right? Taking care of each other because we're all in this together. And uh, yeah, our survival depends on us working together. All right. So my name is Eric Harlock. I am the digital editor at Lancaster Farming Newspaper, the greatest agricultural newspaper in the world. Check us out online at LancasterFarming.com. Become a subscriber, you know? Check us out in, in, in real life, IRL, if you know what I'm saying. Anyway, so uh, you can always get in touch with me, podcast at LancasterFarming.com. Drop me a line, tell me a story, tell me who you are. I, I'd love to hear from you. Speaking of telephones, you can always leave me a message at 717-721-4462. Leave me a message, I'll get back to you. All right, so uh, until next time, I'll see you in the newspaper. Industrial hemp. Episode 93 of the Lancaster Farming Industrial Hemp Podcast is copyright 2020 by Lancaster Farming Newspaper, part of the Steinman Communications family. The show was written, recorded, edited, and produced by Eric Herlock. The wonderful music you hear throughout the show is courtesy of Tin, Bird, Shadow. 